All right, hello everyone, happy Tuesday. Today we are going over our third set of notes for unit four, which is criteria and constraints. So you do not need to open up the set of notes in Haiku. I'm gonna go ahead and give you the completed set of notes after this um, Ed Puzzle, but you must complete the Ed Puzzle with the questions to get credit for it. So criteria and constraints is an extension of one of our steps in the engineering design process. So that engineering design process is what's going to be the basis of all of our projects from now on. Starting on Thursday, we'll start in on our bridge project um, and what goes on with that, starting with the process. But today we're going over the specifics of criteria and constraints. So as usual, the unit big idea, the engineering, de engineering design process is a systematic, iterative problem-solving method which produces solutions to meet human de human wants and desires. Um, so remember, we've talked about this. We went over the engineering design process before spring break, um, and we're going to have a few more brain refreshers with it um, as the week moves along. So it's systematic. We follow a system. Iterative. It's an important word. You need to make sure that you know what this means. Means to a continuous loop. So I'm going to ask this every day. What does iterative mean? Um, it's a problem solving method. We know that through technology. And then of course everything's trying to solve problems to help our wants and desires. So today, though, we're focusing on one part of the engineering design process, the criteria constraints. So the lesson big idea is throughout the design process, designers must constantly compare the solution to the criteria and constraints of the problem. And we're going to learn exactly what that means. So first, let's talk about criteria. We've talked about it a little bit, but now we are fully diving deep into it. So criteria is the desired elements and features of a product or system. So think about it as your requirements, your requirements for whatever your challenge, project, design may be. It includes what the design is supposed to do related to the function, aesthetics, efficiency, et cetera, and so on. So anything that is supposed to have. So in your spaghetti marshmallow towers, it was required that the marshmallow was on top of the tower. It was required that the um, you build the tallest tower. It was required that you cannot tape it to the table, although I did change that criteria later on. Um, but those are your requirements, what it must have, what it must do. So now we're looking at constraints. Constraints are your limitations, limitations on a design. So anything that is limiting you as far as in time, budget, safety, anything. So the most obvious one that we always talk about is time and budget. How much does something cost? How much time do you have to do it? So for our class, lots of time. Time is our biggest one because you guys are not actually buying the materials. But time is our biggest one because you have 20 minutes to make a design challenge or 45 minutes to make a design challenge. When we do our bridge project, you'll have four days to actually build your bridge. So you're under a time constraint. If it's a design that takes, you know, two weeks to build, obviously it's not going to be, it may be a wonderful design, but it's not a good design for the project because you're not following the constraints, those limitations. Um, budget, once you out in the real world with jobs and people hiring engineers and designers, budget is a huge one because you have to make sure that you have the money to pay for the project that you need done. Safety is also another good one that these are just kind of overall umbrella ones that happen on everything. Um, but then you can get into specific ones. So talking about our marshmallow tower again, specifically your constraints where you are limited to a certain number of spaghetti. You are limited to a certain amount of tape and string. So your materials was your constraint. You were limited to that. You couldn't go and grab any random thing you wanted to use. Um, so the designers must compare the solution to the criteria and constraints of the problem. So once you have your problem, you've generated ideas, brainstorming, all that good stuff, you want to make sure that it also follows these criteria and constraints before you make your proposal and actually start to build. Because if it doesn't, then even though it might be a good solution, it's not a good solution for the problem that you have. So let's look at this. Example using a design challenge. All right, so design challenge in this, the challenge is to design an irrigation system, so a water system, watering system, that will supply the people in the community in a remote region with a sufficient amount of water. The water tower with a capacity of 1,000 gallons 
should be filled completely in the fastest amount of time without losing water in transportation. Okay, so, and it gives you your list of materials. So by reading through what the challenge says and then looking at your list of materials, take a second on your own and list out in the question, what are the criteria and what are the constraints? All right, now we're gonna look at it together. So criteria, it must transport water to the tower. So that's the whole point of it. You're trying to get these people the water, so it must transport water. You must be able to fill the tower completely. It says should be filled completely right here. Um, you see that? And then it must be filled in the fastest amount of time. So this is all stuff you have to do. Should be filled completely in the fastest amount of time without losing water. It all comes from one sentence. So you get all your requirements right there. Then let's look at constraints. So we are constrained to materials. That's an obvious one, especially in design challenges. That's usually your biggest constraint. You're limited to certain materials. Then the water tower has a certain capacity. The capacity can only be 1,000 gallons. It can't be bigger, it can't be smaller. Then again, you always are looking at budget, safety, and time are always kind of gimme constraints. In this case, we don't need to worry about budget because it's within a classroom design challenge. But we still have to worry about safety and we always have to worry about time. How much time do we have to complete this challenge? So talking about criteria constraints leads right back into trade-offs. So we'd already talked about trade-offs before, but these are your requirements of a design um, that may sometimes compete with one another. So criteria constraints, they're kind of competition with one another. They're not really partners. Most of the time they don't go along. Most of the time it's a hard thing to balance between the two. So criteria, what's required versus what you're limited to, it will make it harder. That's the whole point of design challenges. It's a challenge because all of a sudden these constraints. If you didn't have constraints, your problems would be really easy with your criteria. So a trade-off is a decision process recognizing the need for careful compromises among competing factors. And again, we're familiar with trade-offs. This is kind of just a review um, stating that we have to make sure we always have this in mind when we're talking about criteria and constraints. So it's those competing factors and how are we going to compromise to make sure that we're following both the criteria and the constraints, the requirements and the limitations at the same time. So let's look at an example. Increasing the takeoff power of a spacecraft and using lightweight materials. And this is a really good example because our criteria is we want to increase the takeoff power of a spacecraft. Then our constraint is using lightweight materials. Okay, well now if we look at our two options, we realize that, okay, if we increase power, usually that means a larger engine, which means heavier. Well, that doesn't follow our constraints. So we look at what's out there. Are there any compromises that could help us both increase this engine and be lightweight? So you look for, you research, are there newly developed materials that may offset weight concerns? What else can we do? So trade-offs often lead into your research for your criteria and constraints. In order to do both, it gets a little bit trickier. And that is the end of our presentation. Um, so now that you have watched or know these notes, like I said, I'm giving you the full set of notes in Haiku. You have that available to you. So it's all under the 4.3 criteria constraints for Tuesday today. Um, you have the full set of PowerPoint. And then the next thing you have is the assignment. So there's three things that you're doing today. So you have the PowerPoint and you have this assignment. And then you'll be doing a quiz as well. So the assignment says you're extracting critical information. When trying to solve a problem, it's critical to extract the important information and not be preoccupied with unnecessary details. That's usually the hardest part. So we have to make sure that we're able to pick out that criteria, pick out those constraints. So below here are three examples. You only have to read two of the three, so just choose whichever two you want to do. Um, and then you're picking out the important information. You're, you're trying to pick out any criteria, any constraints, and usually those will lead to further questioning. So read your scenario. Tell me what scenario you're doing since you only have to do two of the three. Tell me the scenario. Tell me any criteria constraint that you see. So what reading out of here, what is required and what are your limitations? 
then based off your requirements and limitations, you need to come up with at least three questions that will help you gather more information. So questions to help you learn more details about the criteria and constraints. Remember, design problems are not usually laid out for you. They're not very easy to figure out. So you have to figure out that problem. So in order to figure that out, based off your criteria and constraints, what more things do you need to know in order to fully accomplish the task that's given to you in the scenario? When you're done with this, you need to turn it in on Haiku, right-hand side. And then the last thing for the day is taking the quiz. It is an open note quiz, so you can open up those notes that I give you, have given you, um, take the quiz, and get that turned in. All right, get to work.